Hey, this is Bruce Trujillo with Indie 1023. Kofi Awusu Ansa is about to release his debut album. On Indie 1023, we know him as Genesis Awusu, Smiling with No Teeth, out on March 5th. And he joins me today. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's great to be joined by you. I'm so excited for this interview. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time and having the, the interest to, to talk to me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So we've heard a couple of singles on Indie 1023 leading up to this debut album, Smiling With No Teeth. And before we get into everything, I want to talk about the bands that you have on this album. You guys had never really worked together or met before. Um, so yeah. Talk more about that process and how that was working in the studio. It was also like middle of summer for you down in Australia, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I guess it was like, all right, so me, me as an artist, I guess, like everyone, I, I have a comfort zone, but I hate staying in that comfort zone and it, it bores me and terrifies me to stay in that comfort zone. So like, even though I'm good at, I know I can make something work here, but I, I'd much rather just go in to new situations, kind of completely blindfolded, um, because that's, that's the most exciting for me. And um, so I, I guess my manager caught the same the same vibe that that I really like to thrive in in chaotic situations. So he helped me put together this band of of really talented musicians from all different genres. Um, we have Kieran J. Callanan on guitar, Touch Sensitive on bass, Julian Sudek on drums, and my manager himself, Andrew Klippel on keys. And um, I'd never met any of them before, apart from my manager, obviously. Um, and we put them in this like very small, like bedroom sized studio in sweltering heat. Um, and it was like so cramped and hot and uncomfortable that all you could do was like really just make music. Like it, it, it was too hot to, to try and look cool to each other or like be proud and, and all this, all, all you can do is make music. It was kind of like Hot Ones, like the YouTube show. Have you seen Hot Ones? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's kind of like how once they get to like the really hot wings, like they just can't focus on anything except for, you know, you see their truest selves. And that it was the same in that studio. And all we could do was make music and, and uh, we became great friends afterwards. It's a, it's a great bonding experience. That's a, that's a team building experience for sure. Definitely. Um, and in this way, you're also able to have a lot of different sonic backgrounds to create your sound. Uh, so can you tell me, like, how would you describe your music? How would you describe this album to somebody who's maybe never heard your music before? Um, I'm really terrible at describing my own stuff. Like I kind of I, I I much prefer not to. I much prefer to let other people describe it for me. I just make the music. Like it's all very visceral. And I just, I make what I make and and you take from it what you take from it. Like- Is there, is there anything you don't want to be described as? Um, You know, like I've, I've been releasing singles for the last couple of years and all the singles have been like kind of funk oriented. Mm -hmm. um, so people have like kind of labeled me as like kind of like the funk guy, but in reality, all those songs were made in like two weeks of each other. Um, and like after those two weeks, I was already onto the next thing, but it's just like the process of releasing music has been so slow that people have thought of me as the funk guy. Um, so like, I guess in releasing this album, I'm really happy to break that, uh, that label a bit, <laughs> um, but I do love funk music. Um, right. yeah. but you're not the fun yeah, guy can, yeah yeah exactly but you can call me whatever you want I just make the music you interpret it how you interpret it um, and we all have you so your style in life and with your music has been to stand apart from those around you how how has that influenced writing your own music um yeah I mean uh I guess yeah from a young age I was kind of thrust into the the label of the outcast um, and that really influenced like every facet of my life. Um, it, it, it kind of got to a point where every decision I was making was kind of like an act of protest. Um, every, I would just do things because people expected me to do otherwise. And that definitely followed me into music. Like just my complete disdain for being boxed into anything. So it was like, as soon as I did one thing, 
people would be like, oh, you're this guy, you do this. I'll be like, wait, no, 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 <laughs> no, I'm going to do this now. Um, it's, it's always just been about keeping people and myself on, 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 on our toes, um, keeping, keeping it exciting and, and chaotic and unexpected. Um, and that's, that's how I continue to, to make music. Like, I just want to, I just always want to make something new and something I haven't done before. I'd hate to go into the studio and do the same thing twice. Is there anybody musically that you uh, look to that has inspired you in that way that kind of is a, a chameleon kind of person that can change from one thing to another in a matter of minutes even? Yeah, yeah. Kanye was my first influence. Like my first big musical influence was Kanye um, because of his versatility. Uh, Andre 3000, Prince. Uh, yeah, that Erica Badu, uh, Solange. Yeah, they're, they're, they were like my my holy ones you know all right so you're gonna have to play like guest dj for us here soon because that's like all fire um, <laughs> <laughs> so i read up your your write-up in enemy and it started with your favorite art piece in this museum called hedonistic honky haters which depicts <laughs> kkk members draped in like traditional african patterns um and you mentioned in that interview also that that shock is something that you really like and you kind of incorporate that into your work as well, especially into your music videos, which I want to get into. But how do you how do you incorporate that? Is that kind of that staying on your toes and doing the opposite of what people expect you to do kind of a thing? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It works. It works in that realm. I also like, I guess, like duality, the, the duality of things like I might make a really smooth or soulful song, but have the album cover be kind of offsetting or 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 put it like yeah like a bit uncomfortable in a sense like I love the duality of of you know not everything is beautiful and not everything is ugly like everything has a, a yin and a yang and and I love the the whole package of things and I love representing all of that um in ways that people might not have thought of before or or ways that yeah ways that would shock people I guess Nice. So we have been listening to I Don't Need You since last year and more currently Black Dog, both kind of dealing with depression and also being a black man where you grew up. So tell me more mm. about navigating those waters and putting them into song. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I kind of briefly went over before, like um, my my family and I immigrated from Ghana to Canberra, Australia, when I was about two and a half years old in, in 2000. Um, and Canberra is a very small city, a very white city. Um, so I was immediately kind of thrust into the 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 role of the outcast, I guess. Um, and it it was I had an older brother of five years um, who kind of was going through the same thing. And from watching him, I kind of learned that the, there were two paths I could take. I could either try to assimilate a bit or just like fully diverge left and and like wear the badge of the outcast as a badge of honor and I, I chose the latter um and that really kind of just uh protruded in in every facet of my life from that point to to to, to, to today um uh yeah yeah I, I kind of learned to navigate how to be myself by just like being the contrarian and just like doing yeah doing things because people expected me to do otherwise but through that I've refined I've, I guess I've refined that process and, and learned who I really am and, and how to be myself well and let's talk a little bit more about Black Dog that's the one that we are really in on right now I really like the music video for this one too I watched about three times this morning um do you have any say in like the conceptual elements of your music videos because they're also like it's like a an expansion pack onto your music. It's crazy and wild and you don't know what to expect. It's kind of uncomfortable, but you can't stop watching. So tell me more about your music videos. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I usually write uh, all the creative treatments for the for the music videos and then I put them in a hands, the hands of a director to actually like frame it up and, and make it look pretty. Um, uh, but yes, um, the black dog uh it's a it's a theme that that comes across through the whole album um the 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 album follows two characters known as the black dogs 
and one represents uh, depression and the other represents the effects of racism. Um, and I guess like I wanted to explore these these character or these topics in in a way that wasn't just like you know I'm rapping about statistics about depression and racism blah blah blah. Uh, I thought it was like a real fresh approach to like personify them and make them into characters with their own motives and and mannerisms and goals and stuff like that. So this internal black dog, um, which represents depression, his personality is like he wants to lure you in and make you his only one, kind of like a, a toxic relationship. Um, which is where the songs like Don't Need You come in. Like a lot of people hit me up thinking that was just like a, a song about a breakup or something like that. Um, but it's really me navigating this toxic relationship with this with depression. Um, uh, yeah, visually speaking, um, I, I've been exploring this theme um, of like, so so the, the the title smiling with no teeth means pretending things are okay when they're not so i've been kind of exploring this theme of like having this very fractured or obviously flawed image but then kind of dousing it in gold which is where like the gold grills and the gold rings come from um, which is essentially kind of poking fun at how people like to put very superficial solutions to very deep and ingrained problems um yeah, so that's kind of like where the, the bandages and the all over the face come from, uh, you know, contrasted with the gold grills and, and, and the gold rings and stuff like that. All right, and that is actually a perfect segue into uh, Gold Chains, which is your latest single. More about the veneer of fame and kind of uh, feeling hollow with all of it as well, weighted down by that. So expand on Gold Chains for me, this latest single that you've released. Yeah, sure. Um, Gold Chains was one of the first, it might have been, it was the first song on the album that, that I wrote. Um, it, it kind of played with the idea of like perception versus reality um, in that like, I'm an artist that is now, like right now trying to break out. So, but I've been doing this for years, grinding, like going from city to city all around Australia in a van playing to no one but the bar staff, you know, grinding every day. But like from the outside looking in, a lot of people are like, oh, you're a rapper. Where's your gold chain? Oh, you must live such a luxurious lifestyle. Like, you know, so it's it was kind of playing with that, um, that perception versus reality, but also how working in this music industry can exacerbate the, the things like mental health um, and how they all play into each other um and you know and once you do reach that status that you've been grinding for like what what parts of it are really going to help you and what parts of it are really going to hurt you sometimes i feel like we really validate the parts that end up being useless um uh and yeah that's that's what gold chains and the music video is all about all right and you can you touched base on um your former, your music from before this album, the like 20, a couple of years ago when you had, uh, when you were labeled the funk guy and you had made those yeah. songs kind of all within two weeks of each other. So we've got this debut album coming out on March uh, 2nd, 5th. What did I get that from? March 5th. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you already writing new music and kind of going on to the next thing even before this album is released or are, are you gonna kind of sit with this for a minute? I actually haven't written that much music for a while. It's just been like going hard at making this album the best that it that it can be. Um, but I've got like I've got ideas of what I want to do next. Like I want to try and do some like maybe some cool like house stuff or something like that. Something a bit off kilter um, or like some. I want to get into the studio with this guy named Mike Nock, who's like this crazy jazz pianist and just try and create an album in like three days or something like that. Um, I just want to do, yeah, some some wild stuff that that's challenging to to me and to the listener. Um, yeah, but I haven't, yeah, I've, I've been I've been settling down with this album for the most part. Nice. All right. And that was actually my next question. Is there anybody that you would want to collaborate with like in the future? So mm -hmm. you've got who, who else do you think you would want to work with? There's this artist from Australia who makes really hard house music called skin on skin and i want to i want to collaborate with him 
Um, I want to, I, I think a Death Grips collaboration would be really interesting. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> um who else i've already said pharrell um uh yeah i think i think death grips might be death grips and d'angelo maybe on the same track who knows all right all right i'm gonna put that out there that's something that we <laughs> and thundercat thundercat as well thundercat would be perfect okay this is a new super group we're gonna have to get it together <laughs> <laughs> my guest is genesis owusu the debut album smiling with no teeth comes out on march 5th I remember. I am Bruce Trujillo. Thank you so much for joining me today, Genesis Owusu. Thank you for having me.